All right, welcome to Aperture Chat episode one. This is our first video podcast. Uh, I'm Tom Model, from Aperture to Pixels Photography. I get to name the podcast because it's in my studio. Oh yeah, I'm Ryan Pease, Pease Point Photography, and I work for TempleCon. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan lives in my studio anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Live. Live. I let him use studio space. So, we've both done some podcasts in the past, you know, where our friend Jesse runs this thing called The Media File. Uh, actually, I'll be over there tomorrow recording another episode of that. You gonna come over? No idea. Okay. So, this is our first time doing a video podcast, though. So this is going to be a little, diffi a little different for us, and you have might have to go through some growing pains with us, but I, th I think it's something uh, that we're going to be able to do pretty well with. Uh, we're also really good at just blathering on forever, so it should be entertaining at the very least. Um, just because this is our first episode, I just kind of wanted to go through some things. Um, we are drinking Narragansett Lager. They, Narragansett is not a sponsor, though if they want to be, I will gladly drink their beer in the podcast every week. I might do it anyway, so I shouldn't have told them that part, should I? Meh. Whatever. Um, so we're shooting here at the studio. We're in the Pawtucket Armory building in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. So if we start making local references, at least you know where we are. It's a uh, castle. It, it really is. It's really a cool old castle. It was built in, what? 1897. 1897. Oh. I'm glad you knew that. I was just going to say... I have nothing better to do here than look shit up like <laughs> how and when the castle was built and when it's not actually used for anything. Because it wasn't. It's on, it's on the Aperture to Pixels webpage, but I, copy, more I literally it. copied and yeah. pasted it out of the National there's, Register there's Historic Places. There's more to it than the National Register. It's, well, I know, but... It's only really been deployed twice, and it's like it was a very weird building. It, well, it is a weird building. That's why we it's like it. It's a weird it. building now. It's a weird building now, but that's why we like it. And... Uh, so we have, we have this great space. It's mostly an artist building now. I mean, there's us, there's a radio station, there's a performance artist. There's the guy across the hall. I don't know what he does because his windows are all blacked out. I think he's oil paint. Oil paint? Like all right. You can't look in his, in his studio. and I see him go in and out all the time. But I don't I, think I've ever seen him. When do you see him? When I come in like right around 5.30 when I get out of work. Hmm. He's usually going right in. He comes in about the same time I do if I come straight here from work. So he must, he must have a day him. job. People with their jobs. People with their jabs. So we've got this great space. Uh, we've managed to turn what we think was a pottery classroom. No, it was no. It was uh, the office. It was an office for VW Wolf. It was. Oh, thought, it was why is the two twenty over there? I have no idea. I thought that was for a kiln. It may have been a kiln before he had it ten no, years ago. But okay. But anyway, we've turned it into a photo studio. It's pretty awesome. Um, and it's a nice, long, narrow studio, because I've been to some other people's studios, which are just tiny. Yeah. I, like, I don't even understand how they shoot in their studios. I'm amazed that we set this up to allow the doors to open as Jesse leaves. Yeah, like, as, as Jesse sneaks out. Our friend Jesse, who does run the media files, I said before, he set up the cameras for us. Uh, he's got a little video thing he does, I don't know, something about grad school and something. Anyway, uh, he helped us set up the cameras today. And we'll say thank you to him as he's sneaking out the door because he's not going to be able to stay around much I'm longer. I'm impressed none of the tripods are hit by the door. I checked one of them, but... It's really, like, it's really I know, that one's the one that's funny. Like, it crosses just over the top of the foot. So. Yep. Right, so, out, later, guy. See you later. Thanks, Jesse. So, we got set up in here. We've got a great space. It's a studio. It's an office. It's in this old historic building. It's just phenomenal. And this will be the only time you hear us rant and rave about it because... After this, what else are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about all sorts of other stuff. You're going to type about whatever you want. Ah, well, yes. So, just to kind of give you an idea of what we're doing up here, and we've got the space, and what makes this kind of fun is I make fun of Ryan for shooting Nikon. Um, and I make I fun of you for shooting poorly. Yeah. <laughs> See, that, that, that's <laughs> no. the trade off. That's the trade off. No. But, um, so. We, you're going to see us cut back and forth between a few different cameras. We're, we're trying something out here. We've got a three camera setup. Uh, yeah, we've we got a couple of Canons, an Icon. We got some big obnoxious daylight colored lights that I built the other day because I had nothing better to do with my time. Um, are you taking a picture of the setup? Of course I am. All right. So we'll have a picture of the setup to set in there. Um, but tablet pictures. Tablet pictures. At least, at least it's not an iPhone picture. Oh, tablet <coughs> pictures are worse than iPhone pictures. Are they really? Oh, absolutely. 
Expensive. Wait, you ever be at a concert? This is a small tablet. People do that with iPads. I've seen that. I've seen people on their iPads be like, hey, and I'm like, hey, I'm trying to enjoy my concert. And they're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. yeah. The worst part is like the button. You gotta like hold it all the way up and hit the button like it, well, this. The like... last concert I went to was, was further. It was down in uh, the Pawtucket McCoy Stadium. Yep. The people didn't reduce the brightness on their iPads to do it. Like, I, I took a picture with my phone. I yep. turned the fucking brightness down. Yeah. What a, what a surprise when you put a giant iPad with a retina display on full brightness. How annoying that can be. Oh, I'm, I'm not the least bit surprised about that. I got to imagine someone holding their... It's got to look like me with my tripod because it's as tall as I am. And I'm like, I can't see. And I got to put it in live view to be able to take a picture on it. That's why I don't set my tripod all the way up. <laughs> Mine's the same thing. My trap is just a little taller, I think. Yeah, you're also just a little bit taller, so that helps. A little bit. A little bit. Yep, shut up. So, like I said, we got this great space. We're in a great artist building. There's actually lots of artists in the area, which really, as much as they kept claiming this is the art center of Rhode Island, I, I really didn't believe it. It actually is a, a state art district, and it actually is full of people who do I, I was art. really surprised. Yeah, I was actually very surprised about that. We, uh, we have higher hopes for Pawtucket as a city, the more time you spend in this particular block of Pawtucket. Yeah. It, it's really surprising. I actually got invited this week to a Pawtucket Arts cocktail mixer. What one? Uh, I don't know. It was Thursday night. Who was it hosted by? I don't remember. I'd have to look at the email. I ended up uh, not going because I got out of work late and was just like, I don't want to deal with What people. building was it in? It was... Across the street? No, it was 400 Main Street. It's down the other side of the police station. Oh, like across the parking lot from the police station? Yeah. That's cool. I didn't know there was anybody over there. I didn't either. I, they, I randomly got an email. It was like, hey, you're an artist in Pawtucket, and I was going to invite you, but I know you have plans usually on Thursday nights. So. I would have gone and done that, but... Uh, but apparently it's a, it's a monthly thing, so we'll, we'll go hey, next month. we have month. to do that. We'll go next month. I emailed the woman back, and I was like, I'm sorry, I missed it. I, I had some other things going on. And she was like, oh, that's cool. We do this every month. So I was like, okay, cool. We'll I'm planning there. something, too. There's something uh, I want to do here. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. To yeah. be honest with you. I'm really looking I, forward I've to got it. An I idea. don't even know what you're planning, but I'm looking forward to it. We'll, we'll shoot the idea, and we'll talk about how I want to do this and make it a fun thing that will actually produce pictures. Well, anything that produces pictures is a fun thing. I mean, drunken, weird pictures is good, too. Yeah. There's other kinds of pictures? <laughs> sure. <laughs> so anyway, one of the things I, I, I want to get through every week with this podcast is just talk about things that are going on in the studio, in our photography lives, uh, possibly if it's news-related or, or something like that. Um, so that, that's one segment I want to have every week. It's just, hey, what, what happened this week up here? You know, what's going on? Is there anything we're excited about? Um, you know, is Ryan going to spin coins and ignore me? <laughs> it's a podcast of what we do. <laughs> so the first thing I just wanted to bring up, just because it's still fresh in our minds, even though it was, oh, God, it's two weeks ago now. Yeah, it was two weeks ago. It was ago. two weeks ago already. Uh, I wanted to do this last weekend, that's why. Not, not quite two weeks for me. Well, well, okay, for you it's like ten days, but I had to go back to work and have a real job. Yeah, people so. went back to work. We kept moving arcade machines. Uh, but two weeks ago was this 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 big big event down in Warwick called TempleCon, which Ryan and I work all year on, and it will come up from time to time as things are going on where we we plug it like it's our own event because effectively it's our own event. We're not the founders, but we're it's it's an event we're highly involved in, and. I mean, I don't know how many pictures you got to take. I haven't seen what you took from it, but I got I got a lot of really cool stuff out of the con for taking pictures. I got some. I did a little technical stuff that I was happy with working right. with my my pocket wizards and running around. Yeah, you after to, giant robots. <laughs> that was cool. The giant robot was cool. Yeah, you got to do a little bit more technical stuff. I kind of got more run and gun, with the exception of sitting down to shoot the fashion show. I had more run and gun stuff. Yeah, I, I'm not relying on my photography when I'm there. I yeah. don't, I'm not there to shoot. I'm there to be director of staff and yeah. operations. It's yeah, and I'm there to feed volunteers. but and not, <sighs> not kill any of them. You did very well. I didn't stab anybody this year. That's a new record. Yeah, it's zero. Zero is a new record. Zero is a new record. Hey, it was one before. So, um, Yeah, the only thing I actually 
sat down to take pictures of it. I made a point to get in my schedule to take pictures of it was the fashion show, and that was phenomenal. We have some great designers, some great models. It's a lot of fun, and I I will put it right out here. I will say thank you to Matt Norris for letting me use his 7200L lens. Matt because Norris. Matt Norris, MG Norris Contemporary Photography. Um, but Matt, you know, I, I sat down. I had every intention of you know, shooting on my 2470. I was actually framing it out and everything, and Matt's like, hey, you want to shoot with the 7200? I was like, yes, give me. I'd never shot with an L lens before. Oh, yeah. I, it was just, just the fact it was an L lens, I was like, oh, Ooh, it's me. an L lens. It's a $3,000 lens. It's a $3,000 lens because the used market for Canon is really inflated. Yeah, well, I still got to shoot with it. And I was Congratulations. Happy. And, I got, and I got a lot of really good stuff out of it. I'm, I'm good. I, I'm happy. I'm glad you're happy with it. Because, well, I, I was happy. It's good stuff. I, I mean, it, it, it further reinforced the fact that I need to own a 7200, which I will in three weeks. So it's not an issue. But yeah, it's the lens it's, number two should be, or yeah. three at that point. It'll be two. It's 50 mil, it's 2470, 7200, and then you yeah. buy random shit. Random shit's going to be 85 prime. Uh, I'm going 1424 Nikon to yeah. complete the trinity. I'll, I'll go 85 prime L. Go for it. I need, I need the 100 awesome. mil. The, the 100 millimeter macro is really the one I need that, first. That I would actually... We need one of those around, and we don't have one. Yeah, we don't have one. I've got a 50 macro, which I love. You loved before full frame. It still works well in full frame. I can still shoot miniature models on it. It works well. It's, it works not, well. it's not commercial grade. It's, no, it's, it's it not. Loses. It, it's a nifty 50. Not it loses nifty off. 50. I have a nifty 50 as well. But yeah, no, it, it, it does. I don't so, know why I'm so picky. Like, because you're an icon shooter. Oh, yeah, because everything I own is way <laughs> sharper. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. It's all sharper. So, so putting the, the Nikon Canon difference aside, you know, it's a great event. It's a lot of fun. So if you have never been, at least look it up, templecon.org. Check it out. Hopefully we'll see some pictures from this year up on the site real soon. Yeah, uh, well, on the site, yeah, we have to work yeah. on the site. It's already on the Facebook, the TempleCon. Yeah, the, the Facebook, Facebook is loaded with it. Slash TempleCon. Uh, the Facebook is already loaded with it. All weekend long, it was getting uh, everything was being uploaded. Yeah, so definitely check that out, especially if you want to see lots of fun sci-fi stuff. Yeah, shout out to Overkill, the big robot Doom. Oh yeah, those, those guys. What was it? Extreme. Extreme costuming. Extreme I think costuming. Was, uh, yeah. yeah, those guys were awesome. They, not only was it Overkill the giant ass robot, but they had the. Uh, the, the xenomorph, the alien from Aliens. Was that the same group of people? Or was yeah. That, was, was it really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't they know They brought that. out a different costume every night. Oh, I didn't know that those were the same people. Those were the same people. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and, and so I got to chase them around. When I say run and gun, it was literally like Ryan came in. No, I was like, we need to go. <laughs> like, like I'm, I'm standing there, I'm, I'm, I'm watching the RKO Army do, I don't even, I think it was Repo, I don't remember. Yeah, it was Repo. Yeah, it was Repo. Because it's a horrible movie and I never actually want to watch it, but We need friends. to go. <laughs> And Ryan comes running in, and he's like, we need to go. And I'm like, oh, shit, the hotel's on fire. <laughs> and as we're running, he's like, this is a photography thing. I was like, okay, the hotel's not on fire, but what the hell? And then we see these guys. There's a guy dressed up like a space marine, and there's a guy dressed up like the, uh, like, like the alien. And they're chasing each other around the hotel, and it is amazing. These costumes are perfect. And it... Probably took me like 10, 12 shots to dial it in because the lighting in the hotel is really bad and I wasn't planning on that. So I was like, ah, yeah. crap! And then oh, it was so much fun because they went through the board game room. Oh, did they, I, didn't, I didn't see that part. Oh, that, that's, those are the pictures I, I gave you. But they, they went through the board game room and this room is chock full. Every seat is full. I mean, it's, it's just, there's so many people playing games and they come running in and they let me get ahead of them because I realized I was chasing yeah. them. So let me get ahead of them, and they're running through the room, and the, the guy playing the Marines just screaming, Game over, man! It's game over! And he, like, like they beat each other up as they're running around. Oh, it was, it was hysterical. I couldn't stop laughing after I was done. So if my ears are correct, we just lost our wide shot for some reason. But um, Yeah, that sounds about right on that camera. Oh, sweet. So it's probably about time to reset the cameras anyway. Eh, we'll do but it you got, you got, like, three minutes. I'm not sure I know how to set that camera to record. Which one? The the, uh, the, the TI, yeah. Um, there's a red button that looks like a record on a VCR. Oh, you just you just press the hard button. You just press the hard right. button, and it just yeah, starts recording that. again. Um, we can lose the wide shot. That's the one I care the yeah. least about. Uh, in fact, we'll probably use it the least. Um, we so, go. 
So one thing, one thing I, I moving on from TempleCon because we could spend hours just talking about TempleCon because it's fun. Sure. Um, moving on from that, you know, I'm a cannon shooter. You're an icon shooter, and we make fun of Olympus shooters. <laughs> uh, you never make fun of Olympus shooters. They'll defend that to the very end. <laughs> um, but this week, I actually I, there's a woman in my office. I have a day job, so unfortunately. This woman in my office who's like, oh, you, you, you do photography? Uh, and, and I walk around with my 6D on my back at work, well, in my bag, um, which I do use at work from time to time, and it drives them nuts. Uh, but there was a woman in my office, and she's like, oh, you do photography? Can you help me out? And I was like, yeah, sure. I'll give you a little crash course on how to use your DSLR. She gave me this whole sob story. It's been two years since she bought it, and she's never really used it, and this and that. And I was like, yeah, yeah I'll give you a little crash course on how to use it. And she's like, oh, yeah, it's a Canon. I was like, perfect, I can walk you through anything. She shows up, she hands it to me. I'm like, this is an Olympus. <laughs> That's okay, I can make this work. And thankfully, it's close enough to a Nikon, which I'm glad I've shot your Nikon enough times to be able to shoot either or, that I was able to go, oh, yeah, you just do this and that. And I kind of walked her through it and kind of, you know, and, and it worked out she went home that night she took some great pictures of the snow it was it was a tuesday night and we had snow that night yeah and she was all like yeah i want to take pictures and then she came in and showed me all the pictures the next morning and i was like yeah see they're look. cameras yeah i they're, was like they're all built to be cameras yeah so i was like good you, you she showed me stuff and, and and she showed me the stuff she was shooting before when she was just locked into auto and didn't know what she was doing and it didn't look very good and then she's like this is so much better oh time to go change the yeah um, oh, it's nice. You just keep recording. Keep going. So I'm gonna keep telling this story while you go. <laughs> you can set mine last because it goes for 30 minutes. <laughs> so anyway, she shows me the photos, and I'm 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 so happy that she figured out. She did come back and admit that you know some of the stuff that she was she forgot. Yeah, you know, I tried to real quick explain the exposure triangle, and I basically only moved her to shutter priority mode. So I just put it at 60 and take pictures because you're shooting by hand. And even just doing that, she was able to get so much better pictures than, than when she was shooting in auto. And she was so excited, and I was like, you know, if you want to learn a little bit more, you know, there's a few other little tricks I'll show you, but after that, you know, you, you're... I was joking around with her, I was like, after that, you're kind of infringing on my space as a photographer. And she was all excited. She's like, oh, good, I'm getting up there. And I was like... Oh, yes, 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 that, that's exactly, yes. So, that that was my little high, photography highlight at work this week. Mike can right huh. Who, What? 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 Then keep talking. <laughs> and, and the other thing I did this week was I built these obnoxious video lights that we're using now that we have. They're pretty. They are pretty. What's the guy's name? I know you don't know it, so it's Griffin funny. Hammond. Damn it. Ha! Griffin Hammond, the guy, uh, I, I used his idea. I tweaked it a little bit. Um, he has a... And very little bit. Very little bit. <laughs> but <laughs> they looked exactly the same. So Well, okay, I'll, I can tell you what I did do differently. But anyway, um, he's got, yeah, he runs the Indie Mogul uh, YouTube channel, and he had one very particularly good video on doing a DIY video hot light. He has a lot of good content. He has a lot of really good content, but this is the one I ripped off. And he put it out there because he wants people who are doing video to yeah. be able to do this. And so I built two, you know, he built a nine bulb one in his first video and then he refined it and built an eight bulb one in the second one it actually works better because it uses the the splitters so that the light actually has mm. more on it uh and so i took his eight bulb version and because we needed two of them because there's two of us and we wanted the light to be on each person individually i decided to turn it into two six bulb versions and what i went and did was put in 100 watt equivalent bulbs which are only 23 so between the 12 lights, we're still only pulling like 250 watt. Which is incredible, considering we have about 1,200 watts worth of light going right now. Yeah, they look good. And, oh. and they look good. They're all daylight fluorescent, so that we can dial in the cameras right to 5,000, and they, they work. They look great. Uh, I also added switches, because his was just plug in, unplug. So I wired in a couple of switches, so we don't have to unplug them if we want to turn them off. And his has a... a thing to the front and a thing to the back, and he put all the wiring in the back. Mm. I just did them both to the front, because I got the same size bins. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
That worked out. But it works out pretty well because I, I did the outside one in black and the inner one in white, and the white bounces the light forward and the black keeps it from spilling over everywhere. So, you know, taking a page out of the uh, umbrellas from the back there. Uh, soft boxes. Not the soft boxes, I was talking about the umbrella. Oh, the umbrellas like, that are. The actual yeah, umbrellas that are. Reflective, reflective umbrellas. Reflective yeah. umbrellas. It is the same concept as the soft box, too, but. Uh, yeah, so I was looking at that and I said, oh yeah, if I do black to the outside, white to the inside, I won't have the spillover. Because one thing I do notice in his videos when he uses that is there is a bunch of spillover light from the outside. Because he just used the white bin and it, it's diffuse on the spillover and harsh in the center. But hmm. th this kind of killed some of the spillover light. Yeah, I'll have to, I haven't actually taken a real look at the footage yet, but yeah. It's... Yeah. Um, so that, that was my other big project around here this week. That and playing a lot of Minecraft. Yeah, after working on the convention for four months, I just... You, you oh, yeah, Titanfall happened. Titanfall That's, happened. Titanfall happened, so that took three days out of <laughs> working on anything. <laughs> hey, you, know, you, you need to relax after the con, right? Yeah, it was a long lead-up, and then the con was... The con went very well. Yeah, but I, I think that's probably the best run, at least yeah. of all the years I've been involved. I didn't do anything. That's the idea. That means it ran yeah, really we, well. We, we worked a lot Thursday. People, people were always fixing things, but it was... Everybody handled their stuff. Yeah. It's... That, that's, it's that's a convention. Key. Yeah. Um, so, unless you got anything else that happened this week, I know you you pretty much have been quiet with with Titanfall. Yeah, we're working on TempleCon, getting TempleCon stuff TempleCon Temple wrap up. Tax season soon, so you get to do that for a week or two, and oh, the government a bunch of money. I did taxes last week, and you and your job, my job, making taxes fun. No, that just make. That, that's one part of my taxes. All the studio taxes still took me like four hours to get through. Yeah, but you still get money in the end. I have to go well, find yeah, money. I have, I have to job. find money to pay the government for my, my taxes. <laughs> the taxes I paid the government for the studio are the taxes that they take too much away from me because I like it that way yeah. for my day job. It, it's closer to balancing out than it used to be. Um, but that leads right into my... Yeah, I have, I, I have a little cheat sheet. Um, that leads into my next one, my... My little segment I called Tom's Topic, because I really... Ha <laughs> ha, I get it, it's tease. Yeah, you should see what the one for Ryan is called. It's called Ryan's Rant. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> no. But basically, the only thing... I, I, I don't even know if I really want to talk about this, but it was just talking about having a day job. And, oh, yeah. And working around that, and, you know, normally it's great. I can shoot in the evenings. Most people are okay with shooting in the evenings or on the weekends. In fact, that's usually when they're free, so that's not really not an issue. The only thing I'm upset about is this week coming up, uh, probably the day we're going to put this up on the air because it's probably going to take Jesse a couple of days to edit this for us. Um, on the 25th, Gavin Hoey, who you know I, I'm a big fan of, you know, out of the UK. Um, oh, Gavin Hoey, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 you know, he does a lot of fun stuff. He does a lot of really creative stuff. And he's going to be in New York City doing a day full of free classes. What day is that? The 25th. What day is the 25th? Uh, <laughs> Wednesday. Yeah. yeah, I'm stuck at work. I have an event I cannot get out of. Mm. Um, I, I don't think I can really make it either. But I know. If you can get down, if anyone else is interested in seeing Gavin Hoey and you're not already paying attention to this, uh, he'll be at Adorama. Um, oh, it's at Adorama? It's at Adorama Store. You know, they've got the, the classroom in the back, and he's going to be teaching, like, three, three or four classes. It's free. You just show up and, you know, just to meet the guy. I'd like to meet the guy. I mean, I've been watching his stuff in, 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 for a while. Um, I'd also like to meet Mark Wallace, but he's going to India for the next... Yeah, he's just going away. He's just going away for, like, four That's years. good for him. <laughs> I, hey, I wish I could pick up and, and do what he's doing, and I wish him the best of luck, because, honestly, he, he's... Between the two of them have been a huge inspiration for me opening this studio. Uh, just the fact that I can see what these guys do and go, oh, you know, I could open a studio. I could do that. And it's not something I really... I, mean, I always liked photography and I was never really committed to doing anything about it except take some pictures. And watching these guys and going, you know, just their sheer passion for what they do was like, you know, I'm going to take that jump and I'm going to do that. So... And I did about a year ago. I, I made that jump, and it's so a little crazy. It's it's crazy. I'm glad I haven't given there's, up. There's a, day a job. whole episode of why this is insane that I would love to go through. We're going to at some point. 
there, there might be in the next couple of weeks. We'll talk about yeah. why this is insane and why I truly have not given up the day job yet. Yeah. Because oh, and why we got lucky with space and why we got oh, we're very lucky to have the this amount space. of money the space costs if, doesn't really happen. If this space were anywhere else but where it is, we would not be in it. Let's put it that I, I would be absolutely honest. We would not be in this space if it was anywhere else. We are very lucky and we are very happy to be in this space, and it's great. So. Yeah. yeah. And plus, it's in Pawtucket, and we like Pawtucket. Well, everything we do is already in Pawtucket. We're slowly building, like, a small empire out of Pawtucket. Uh, right, right here in Pawtucket. It's great. So we have the Temple Games. There's the other mill complex across the river, which now has two other people that we know in it. It's great. Oh, yeah. Grant, both Grant, Grant, Grant and Simon, and Simon have, have Temple Con there. have studios at the same mill complex. Yep. And then the Temple itself is off to the other part of the town. They're all within a mile and a half of each other. <laughs> so we have a good little it, and network going. You know, we were talking about earlier how there's a lot of artists here in Pawtucket. You see these windows behind us. Literally in the street on the other side of the windows is another photography studio. And I've worked with them. I've, I've gone over there and done, and done some stuff. And yeah, it's, it's the Studio Without Walls, the group shoot stuff. Yeah, it, it's a lot of fun going over there. And stuff. He does a lot of workshops. In fact, there's one tomorrow night. Yeah. I'm debating going to. I don't have money to spend on workshops. And I don't know why they just don't do it for me interest-wise. Just It's, it, it's a pin-up workshop. It's going to yeah. be fun. Oh, I'm sure it'll be a blast. I, I, I would rather be the one organizing things, yeah. as usual. Well, that is one of the goals over here. So. I See, we can start doing that. I, We could definitely start using the space for that. Yeah. Oh, I'd, I'd like to start using the space for that. Which... I'm up for it. All right. Pay some rent. You're, hear, you're hearing it right here. We're going to do some workshops here in the studio. Um, there, there's the announcement. It, it, it's official. It's on YouTube. It's official now. Yeah. We haven't really talked about what we've done as photographers. So as far as you know, we're just full of shit. We really are, Wait, but we anyway. are full of shit. But then again, ninety percent of the people on YouTube are full of shit. So, some of them are full of shit and are able to do that. <laughs> it takes me a lot longer to be full of shit and tell people <laughs> that I'm not full of shit. <laughs> Although I may just start everything with "I'm full of shit" and here's how you do this. Yeah, and and you know what the best part is? People will take you more seriously for that because mm. they'll be like, "Well, at least he's willing to admit he's full of shit." Yeah, I think class class one is obviously this, like, why in the world this is in the studio. I am actually curious why that's There was in the a studio. legitimate reason I have this guessed. exists is in, in this photo studio, and I'm not going to tell you now. I hate you. No, yeah, we're, we're doing an episode of this. Okay. Because this, this is a legitimate creative photo tool. I am totally bewildered by why you have a whisk. Wrapped in gaffer's tape. The winter has stopped. It's starting to be spring. This actually will become a thing. Hopefully we'll get some really cool pictures. Maybe shoot some video at the same time, because this might be really cool. Oh, we're, we're, we'll definitely do that. Actually, I have a video uh, uh, planned that I we're going to have to get out of the studio and go do something. This is definitely get out of the... We cannot do this in the studio. All right. This cannot be done in a habitated area. <laughs> Now I'm scared. <laughs> now I'm really scared. That's all I'm going to say about the whisk. All right. Um, you know, I never reset the timer, so... We're fine. When we hear the cannon... Yeah. The, when we hear the, the rebel click off, yeah. we know we're running no, out of time again. We're fine. So, um, we can do the close. Yeah, we, we, we're really the only... <laughs> <laughs> and there goes the rebel. Um, so, if you have any questions for us, other than what do I do with the whisk... Because obviously we'll get to that. Although, please ask. Or at least he tell Ryan. No idea. I really have no idea. So if you have ideas on what we, what we could do with the whisk, put them in the comments. No. Uh, please don't put that in the comments. Mostly because I want Ryan to just cringe every time he reads one of them. Uh. Mm. <laughs> Keep going. Now that you've done that, congratulations. Um, if you have any questions you want us to answer, you know, put them in the comments. Put them on the Facebook Absolutely. page. Absolutely. Uh, we absolutely would love to have questions to answer. Uh, if not, I'm going to start making up questions and attributing them to random people. And at least it will be entertaining. Sure it will be. It will always be entertaining. You're never entertaining. I didn't say I was going to be entertaining. I said the questions would be entertaining. All right. Which just means you're going to be answering them. Yeah. Um, and so... Yeah, you have questions, comments, you want to see more, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe, make sure you come visit our respective uh, Facebook pages, Aperture to Pixels or Peace Point Photography. Another YouTube 
YouTube pages and, and all, all our content is linked to this by the time this comes out that we have no idea exists yet. Yeah, you know, all, all, all sorts of stuff will be linked together there. Uh, that that's really uh, yeah. It's the first show. Thanks. It's the first for show. For watching one of probably a dozen people to watch this. Good job. Yeah, well, I'm hoping. You know, no, a dozen is about my goal. Well, a dozen's easy. We I think a dozen. We can we, get we a, can dozen a dozen people to watch it. A dozen. I think I can do like just out of my family should be good. A dozen. We can do 20 is like a new record for my YouTube videos. <laughs> like 20 would be amazing. Well, well, one will be a record for my YouTube videos. This is my first one. I have so. YouTube videos. They're just weird, intentionally just not anything in particular. Well, They're also kind of cool and cool pieces of footage. But well, well, we'll link to them too. Yeah. There's a tiger. There's little baby tigers. Little baby tigers. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I know Jesse stopped me from doing this on my, uh, on my last video, but I'm going to put it out here in this one. Um, our intro and outro music, which you haven't even heard yet, yeah, I know, you're going to love it, um, is a song called Retro Future by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Uh, he lets us use whatever we want under Creative Commons attribution. He's got an awesome website full of music. So I'm if you don't sure like, it's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. If you hate it, find me something better. I'm sure you have good taste. I'm a bass player that likes ska. It's just one big, long bass riff. <laughs> All right. <laughs>